Hello, I'm Chris Dill. I've made a video uh, on how to use password managers. A password manager is a database where you can store all your account info for different sites, services, and whatnot that when you're using the internet, visiting clients, and much, much more. So I'm hoping you're here to learn about password managers, how to learn how we can start practicing what we preach, and by that I mean how we can create strong, unique passwords for every single account that we ever create. And why do we need to do this? Well, first of all, if you have one or two, maybe three or four different passwords that you're using across a multi multitude of different sites, what if one of those sites gets compromised? If that site gets compromised, an attacker or even the site administrators themselves might have your password in clear text, allowing them to, for example, abuse your Facebook, your, your uh, firewall management, or whatnot. So there's no doubt about it. We need a system to help us enforce good security, enforce good passwords. And for that, I introduce a password manager. The password manager I'm using is called KeePass, and I'll take you through how I'm using it and how it helps my world become a lot, lot more secure to, uh, for me and also for my clients that I work for. So KeePass can be found at keepass.info. However, there are also other systems that can be used for password databases. Uh, but KeePass has been working for me for many years now. It receives constant updates, which is something that is important. Where there's actually developers maintaining this software. It's completely free, which is quite awesome. It is open source, which is even more awesome. And it basically just works. So I'll show you how, how I'm using this database. First of all, I'll just open my database file. It's stored as a KDBX file. I'll enter my master key for this demo database. And notice that it just took a second or two to open this database. That is because when you open it, it has to decrypt the database. And not just decrypt it one time, it, it decrypt this, decrypts it over five million times, just to make it slow, just in case when, if you lose your database to a, uh, some bad guys on the internet or whoever, they will need to do the encryption routine five million or more times for each guess comparison they want to try against your database. So it's quite useful. Uh, in fact, if I were to set up a new database today, I would probably do like 50 million, 50 million iterations, making it quite slow to open and save the database. Keep in mind, I have this database synced to my phone as well, so I need something that won't be too slow. But waiting a couple of seconds, maybe five, six, seven seconds opening my database, it's not a problem considering the added security that we're getting from it. When I open my database, I have all kinds of different categories on the left side. I store everything from client logins, where I have my user accounts, uh, I have private stuff in here, I have credit card info, I have PIN codes for my access cards. Many of my clients, they, they assign me access cards. And for these badges, I need unique PIN codes for those as well. So I store those, I store API keys for my programming stuff. A lot of, lot of stuff. I have more than 200 accounts in this system. So, and also for, for one of those clients in, in my list here, I have about 30 accounts. And for those 30 accounts, I have 15 different usernames. That means that not only can I remember the passwords for those accounts, if I were to manually remember them, I can't even remember the usernames. It's, it's impossible, guys. So we need to start using these password managers for, for the greater good, to be honest. Uh, say I wanted to log into Facebook. I'll just search for Facebook and I'll find all the entries that are that, that has something with Facebook in them. Uh, the first one here is my login and I also have some different logins as well where I've used Facebook to sign up to a site. I'll type in, I'll go to facebook.com and as you can see my cursor is now blinking in the login field. I'll open up a database, press Control V and KeePass will auto type my password for me. It's quite a useful. Um, it's quite a useful function to quickly log into services. If I were to do it manually, I could just go back, press Control B, and I have the username. I could press Control C, and I have the password, and do a login. As you can see, I'm being prompted with a two-factor authentication. In fact, 
my phone is now blinking that it's generated me a code allowing me to log in. So this auto typing is found in the properties of the entry. Uh, you can override the settings for auto typing which is very useful for Linux system. Uh, Linux systems as we'll see shortly. For this specific entry uh, we are using the default sequence for the auto typing. Basically it's just doing a username then it does a tab changes into the password field, types the password, then does, then presses enter. Uh, for Linux systems, however, let's see, I have an SSH server in my garage. For Linux systems, we need a different sequence. We'll do username, press enter, do a delay of one, uh, 1.5 seconds, type in the password, press enter. This works quite well for Linux systems. In fact, we'll try it right now. I'll ha I have a putty on my desktop. Type in the IP of my server. Press Control V. It does my username. Presses Enter. Waits. Types in my password, which is very long because I never need to see these passwords. In fact, the Facebook password I logged in with, I've never ever seen it before. Uh, in fact, I'll show you who. I'll I'll show you guys how easy it is to change my password. So this is the password I just logged in with. If I want to change my password using KeyPass, I'll do password, paste it in, enter a new Linux password. I'll go into my entry. I'll do password generator. I'll create, say, I'll create a, like a 55 line password, upper lowercase, digits, minus, and the line, special characters, and so on. Create, and the entry is now updated. I'll press OK, press Control C, and paste it into my Linux terminal. And voila, the password has been updated successfully. I never seen this new password this new password. I never need to see it ever again. So that just simply works guys. Uh, I hope you will take a look at password managers. Uh, it's really been life changing for me over the past few years and I can't in, I can't really understand why not more people are using it. It is quite a necessi necessity today. At least if you want to stay secure and and pay some good uh, respect to your clients, for example. Say, say if you're reusing the same password for your logins to clients or you're, you're using their systems with a weak password, you could actually be the source of compromise for some of your clients. So please do consider using this application. So with this application, I mean password managers in general. Uh, I hope you guys will start using it if you're not already. Uh, I hope that you will challenge me on interesting problems that might arise using password managers. Uh, so far every single problem I've encountered has been solved in one way or another. For example, if you need to have console access to a machine, I've solved that. If you need to change passwords over RDP, it can be solved with using some uh, pretty cool auto type sequences and yeah it just simply works um, thank you very much for watching uh, do leave a comment if you have anything to say I appreciate it uh, have a good day thank you very much bye bye